citizens of the world, welcome to New Province. Terra Nova was born from a dream, a vision of brighter tomorrows. Let's start with the basics. Crackdown 3 is set in New Providence, a city controlled by Elizabeth Niemand, who's a dastardly CEO that is enslaving citizens and performing global terrorist attacks. It's your job to work your way through the divisions of the company in order to scale the Terra Nova Tower, which is the centerpiece of the map that everything revolves around. And yes, I did try to scale it at the start with a weak agent with middling success. Let's just say it's not as captivating a prospect of Ganon's castle in Breath of the Wild. Changed your mind, Agent? Despite the fact that New Providence is double the size of Crackdown's Pacific City, it feels significantly smaller. The environment is cramped but devoid of life, especially for an action game in 2019. Whereas in Crackdown you had gang-controlled islands and locations with a discernible sense of character, in Crackdown 3 there are different icons and goons scattered everywhere and barely any room to breathe which doubles down on the chaos in its finest moments, but also makes it so I can't creep down the block without my car getting blown to smithereens. Your enemies, the leaders of the various divisions of Terra Nova, are all immediately interesting, with their nefarious ambitions introduced by a gorgeous suite of anime style cutscenes. But once that's over, I never saw them again outside of the occasional audio taunt and their corresponding boss battle which meant that more often than not, they appear clad in a mech suit, angry at my mute self for breaking up the party, and then I fill them full of holes. Character development is non-existent, despite the interesting premise behind each of these inspired villains, which feels like a waste. And the repetition of taking down the leader gets old quick, which also tracks for most of the missions leading up to the showdowns. These boil down to a series of solutions, a keypad to hack, a static weak point, or a beefy enemy, which as long as you focus on it and endure some bullets, you can get over within a minute or two. The best missions in the game dare to offer you one more layer of difficulty, which involves planting or rejecting a generator to unlock the path to a hackable keypad. Even during the slightly more scripted and bombastic boss battles, the game throws enough checkpoints and supply points at you to ensure that you never hit a brick wall. One refreshing series of missions, however, were the propaganda towers, optional agility tests that have you floating around lasers and shifting platforms in order to reach a summit of a beacon, which you then transform into an inspiring radio station pumping out delightful Terry Crews quotes. Did I mention you can play as Terry Crews? Well, yes you can, and it's a clever stroke, but like the villains, Terry, or Commander Jackson for that matter, is sorely underutilized in the main game beyond pure aesthetic value. It feels like Crackdown 2.5, and luckily for those of you still interested, what worked then feels even better now. The diamond in the rough of Crackdown has always been its moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, and in Crackdown 3, it's dangerously addictive. The lock-on shooting is a marked change of pace for modern shooters, and combined with thrusting through the air to reach new heights, it has never felt so good to be an agent in a crumbling dystopia. This makes casual exploration heaps of fun, and following the breadcrumbs to more agility orbs is still just as satisfying as ever. Plus, punting goons into oblivion still totally rules. This time around, each level up doesn't just offer a statistical upgrade either. Sometimes it's a new piece of equipment like a bouncy launch pad, a singularity grenade or a new car model. This adds a small amount of variety but doesn't exactly feel revolutionary within the established format. I had unlocked 75% of the weapons in Crackdown 3 within my first few hours of play, and was a little disappointed at the arsenal, though some of the unique weapons like the Graviton Tether and the Black Hole Creating Oblivion do make up for this. The most unfortunate aspect of Crackdown 3 is when you've bested the lieutenants and stormed Nemad's tower, there's nothing left to do beyond collecting orbs and completing races. I clocked out just shy of seven hours, and that involved completing the campaign at a leisurely pace over a weekend with all the supply points and side content finished. And if you were wondering about Wrecking Zone, the cloud-based multiplayer component that might flesh this package out a bit, I wasn't given access to that during the review period, so can't comment. Sure, you can collect every orb and max out your agent, or ramp up the difficulty to run the gauntlet again in co-op, but at the end of the day it's a question of value, and whether you can stomach that amount of content for the full ticket price. Yet, if you've got Xbox Game Pass, it's included, so it's easy to recommend. This is daft, polished fun, even if it doesn't push the boat out like it should. We give it three stars. Ah, the siren song of agency justice.